past year and a half when I got my first PCR test done, test done back home in Budapest when I was like pooping myself. I was so, so nervous about it, about it being painful and how long it would take for me to get the results and will it be delayed and blah, 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 blah. Now I'm like, meh, I know how it goes. Hi, Rob. Uh, can you tell us what time zone that you'll stream the next week for Project M so we can catch your stream? No, 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 Rob, that's cheating. So the best thing you can do to keep your eyes on making sure you don't miss out the stream on the 9th of May is to be in Discord. Join the Discord, turn on that notification. I will make sure that you guys are updated and in touch with me with, throughout the week that I have off of streaming. So you guys aren't completely like, we, you will hear from us over the week off. And um, I will continuously message you guys on the Discord, reminding you guys of the date and giving you guys an official time uh, time zone like PST or CTE or one of those time zones that you can kind of calculate for yourself what that means for you um, and uh, then you know to be when to be in the chat and wait for the stream to go live so you don't miss out a single second and I do highly recommend you to, at least for this day if it's the one if one if you're gonna watch one stream from beginning to end I highly suggest that it's May the 9th. I wonder what they're delivering. I couldn't tell. Anyway, so just just go to the Discord for now and then all will be all will be sorted and announced. Don't worry about it. Keep, keep in touch on the socials and on the Discord. Hello, hello, welcome. Thanks everyone for coming in and dropping a follow. Okay, we're here soon, so um, just have to keep my eyes out for when he drops, when the tuk-tuk drops us off. But I smell, I smell Chinatown. We're in the herbs and spices and tea leaf area. Hi, Prius. Hello, hi guys, hello everyone. Project M because it's starting in May, right? <laughs> to get the next project and adventure going. It's always bittersweet, you know? That's kind of one of the realities of travel, you know? Hold on, time to pay. Just a sec. Alrighty. Perfect. Thank you. Sweet, easy. Donzo. So, welcome to Chinatown, guys. Let's move around. Are we going the right direction? Probably. All right, guys, let's get lost. It's worse than chestnuts. God, having this weather, it's a bit strange. It's like overcast and a little dark and gloomy but the air is nice and cold. It's really nice. Good morning, tech lover. Yes, tomorrow is May the 4th. It is the final day of streaming here in Thailand. Also Star Wars Day. <laughs> yeah, May the 9th is um, the day we will go live again from Project M's location and reveal the project slowly throughout the day of streaming. So that's why I highly recommend you stay 
for as long as you can on the stream on May the 9th because the reveal is going to trickle in slowly throughout the day. So. <laughs> hey, Perp. Yes! May the 9th, guys, mark it in your calendars and don't forget to join the Discord and put those notification like alerts on so that you get all of my updates on Discord so that you do not miss out. You don't miss out. Um, okay, time to cross. Durian season chat. So later today we are going to go to the Durian Festival that's in another part of town. I'm not sure what to expect there. Um, but I guess, considering we are going to a durian festival, I guess I'm obligated to try at least one thing with durian in it. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, chat. <laughs> Hello, good morning. I'm good. How are you? How's the travel hype going? I love that feeling. At this moment, I am extremely stressed out of my face. Um... It's, you know, because it's not just about taking a trip, it's it's a big leap of faith for our streaming career, so it's a lot of pressure. Um, but it is also exciting. And I'm very happy to go on a new adventure and, of course, see Gaspar again. So, there's a lot of mixed feelings. <laughs> a lot of mixed feelings. Oh, that was you, Valen. Yes, I saw the bath bomb pack having their durian snacks oh my goodness chat stay tuned for later today guys we're gonna go to the durian festival Ugh. are there durian scented vape liquids asking for a fan oh gosh tech Ugh. you know what probably I wouldn't know I don't vape google it Oh, there's a long lineup at this gold shop. I wonder what's going on here. All these gold shops in Chinatown. Hi, hello, we're good. How are you, Jacob? A durian is that big fruit that has that very potent, pungent smell. And it's an extremely popular, like, very important fruit. And it's the season at the minute. Um, it's a, a very highly regarded fruit in Southeast Asia. And it's, it's actually a big deal and it, it goes for a lot of money. Like people buy, like it's a very expensive fruit too. It's known as the king of fruits. But it has an extremely pungent, potent smell that you perhaps might not like if you're not used to it. From scuba diving to sky diving, it's quite the inversion of concept. <laughs> Leap of faith. Oh, almost got juiced on. Okay, hold on. This place looks good. Oh, sorry. Get no 99. Oh, Scotty, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Get No. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're still working on that sub count, guys. So important. Thank you so much. So the lineup was for one of the gold shops. Oh, that dog does not like me. Okay. Twitch's first day skydiving drone. First skydiving drone. Oh. Yeah, hotels don't permit durian. They fine you if you try and sneak one in. <laughs> uh, oh, I need to cross the street. I already went too far, apparently. Um, all right, let's try and find a place to cross the street, guys. I was getting lost in the awesome energy of Chinatown already. You forgot to sleep. My tattoo's doing pretty okay. I took a bath last night, had a shower this morning. You know, sweated a lot during my workout sessions these last few days. Seems to be okay for now. There are the signs outside, yeah, and you can get fined like quite a lot of money. Okay. So. It's so busy today. Tuesday. They're painting up the price of gold. 
painting the price of gold on all the gold shops. It's insane. The gold trade. I mean, we are in Chinatown. I guess that's where it happens. Oh, maybe that's why people are coming and lining up because gold is actually quite low at the minute. That's really interesting. I'm, I, you know, I don't follow this, but they we're going through there. Was tattoo the announcement Gaspar mentioned on? What? No. This is not a real tattoo, guys. If you were watching the last stream, this was the, if you were watching my last stream on Sunday, uh, you would know that it was an airbrush tattoo that we did at the market. <laughs> It was just something we did for fun. It's gonna wash away in five days. But it's nice to see, think, see that it's actually so good that you think it's real. Okay. Just have to be a little aggressive here so we can cross the street finally. Yeah, it was done on stream on Sunday. See, look, like, for example, depending on the kind of durian you want to buy, like, you can buy, like, this costs you over $30 for those. Like, depending on the t type of the fruit and stuff, like, it's, yeah. Oops. It's an airbrush on tattoo, guys. It's not a real tattoo, it's an airbrush paint. Yeah. Trust me, you would know that you would know if it's a real tattoo. I don't randomly get tattoos like no big deal. <laughs> it was just something we did on stream on Sunday at the market, the airbrush thing. Yeah. It's already starting to flake off actually. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. I don't know, if, there's probably clips of it um, from last stream. Anyway, so no, that was not the big announcement that Gaspar posted in Discord. I don't know what big announcement he posted on Discord, but you know, the big thing that's happening is Project M. Hi Zen. Again, it's not a real tattoo. It's what we got airbrushed on at the market on Sunday. Once I sit down, you'll probably see it better. Um, okay, wait, I'm lost in the marketplace now. Oh, okay, actually, if I just keep going straight and then we can turn in. I'm not sure. Yeah, if I turn left here, I think we might. USC? Uh, UC, ah. Oh. Thank you, Zen. Yeah, I got a lotus one this time. I mean, we've done these airbrush tattoos a couple of times. We got the like travel, like compasses, and finally want, went for a lotus. Hi, Spark. You see, ah, okay, nice one. <sighs> All right, through the market we go. So I think if we turn left here, we'll actually end up going to the secret cafe that I stumbled upon the other day. That's our first destination. Seriously need my caffeine chat. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. Go through the shoes, suit shoes section. Some noodle shop here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all somewhat looks from Okay, get the motorbikes up. Uh, some place to go, oh gosh. I can't even finish the sentence because I'm freaking out. This place is always so crowded. Uh, am I going the right way? Am I going the right way? Recenter. Is it this way or? Yeah, I think it should be up ahead actually. So I pinned it the last time we got lost in this market. It's literally the only way you can find things again if you want to like particularly go to a place in this crazy ass Chinatown market. It's so busy. <sighs> Selling everything. I mean, it is a road tech, so. You don't have to. Oh! Chat, I, is it raining? Ho hold on. Hi, kitty! Hi! Is it raining? No, it's not. Hello! 
Every cafe has a cat. Hello, kitty. <laughs> Taking care of her garden. All right, let's go inside. Turn on the volume really quick. So we're in the middle of the Chinatown market and then there's this really cool industrial looking cafe. So it's just... Hello! And there's like an upstairs. Super cool. Hi! Oh, yes, thank you. Ooh. Yeah, it's my last two days in Thailand. So share, yeah. Sorry? Where have you been? Um, I lived here for one year. I travel oh. almost everywhere in Thailand, but so sad to leave. <laughs> uh, but I just found this place like a few days ago, so I'm excited to try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Berry coffee. What's the, what's the berry coffee? Um, it's a berry juice. We have mulberry, strawberry, raspberry. We sing together and we put like a chart of espresso in oh. it. Oh! So it will be very refreshing. That's so cool. Mm, what berry do you recommend? Do you um, have it, a recommendation? It's together. Yeah, like yeah. We make a juice together. We just separate it. So it will be like a berry juice with espresso. We cannot separate like only strawberry or raspberry. Like oh, that. it's all together all mixed together. berry. Yeah, it's oh, mixed berry together. okay. Well, then I will try. That sounds okay. really cool. Thank the you. Big, the berry coffee? Yes. One thank coffee? You. You're gonna have it here, taking away? Um, for here, please. Yeah. It will be ninety, please. Okay. Mm. You've been here two days ago. Yeah, I walked through and I found the uh, plate. I was like, oh, I have to come back. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, thank you. Oh, cute place. I kind of want to sit on the bench here because, or do you want to sit outside? Outside chat. I think outside is less like it's kind of. It's not hot out, so I'm gonna sit outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? And we can like watch the action go by as well. That'll be cool. Right now it's suddenly like really quiet in this area of Chinatown. <laughs> but these seats are really comfy. Yes, awesome, perfect. Is this like, is this an electrical scooter in front of us? Oh. oh, yeah, we're here. This is our final day in Thailand. We're just uh, in, in Bangkok here uh, in the Chinatown in Bangkok. Very, so kind of like, the, I think it sounds like the similar idea to that, like, my new favorite summer coffee drink, which is the um, espresso shot over orange juice. This one is over berries, a mix of berries. Also, it's always great, yes. What time does the Durian Festival open? It's, I think, technically open already, um, but I'm planning on going there a little bit later today. Um, kind of maybe like, the stop just before like an early dinner or something. Yeah, we sold our scooter quite a while ago. I want an e-scooter just to zip around my neighborhood. Yeah, I don't know, uh, etrangroup.com? Is that it? It looks like it might be electrical. I don't know. You don't see them very much here in Thailand yet. What about where you guys stay? 
The playlist. So you want to know the playlist from the American OJ coffee bar the other day. Where did we where did we go have coffee the other the other day? Oh, by the river? The with the live music? We're like literally in the streets today with our coffee. <laughs> the DJ? What DJ? Oh, you mean on Sunday? Of course, so dumb. When we were at the market where we went and got our airbrush tattoo. Um, so I think if you Google Viva 8, Viva V I V A, A, number 8, like it all in one word, like Google it, that's the cafe's name. And they might have a website, and I feel like the DJ is featured on their website. You might get his music, but it's a it's a DJ's mix, so it's not commercially available, I don't think. Oh, thank you. Oh my god, this looks really great. Oh, oh, thank you. Ooh, this is really interesting. And there is a cocktail cherry on top, rosemary, um, and dried lime slice with some, like, cocktail ice cubes in there. Nice. If you do the Discord command in the chat, you will get the link to the Discord invite. Just press accept invite and you will, I think there's a 10 minute cool down before you can type anything in the chat. Um, oh, I may get run over before I can even drink my coffee. Huh. So this is gonna be my first try of berry coffee. Very interesting. It does look really refreshing. I'm really excited. She said it was a refreshing choice, so I'm excited about this. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Whoa. Oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my god, this is absolutely amazing. It's basically just, a, yeah, it's like berry, like puree, like kind of like fresh. And with coffee and ice. I'm not sure if there's any milk in it or if it's just kind of this more milky picture because, um, milky consistency because of the berries. But however they make it, it's so amazing. It definitely, if you're not too sure about the orange juice espresso, this is like the best alternative because coffee already has like a berry undertone. Some coffee grounds have that berry undertone. Hi kitty, you coming? And um, so it really goes really nice hand in hand. Uh, I'm not Bulgarian, I'm Hungarian. Um, two different countries. My mother is Hungarian, my father is French Canadian. Um, and it's a coffee, it's a coffee roast. And so with the berry like flavor, it kind of brings out the chocolatey under taste, undertone. Chocolatey undertone of the coffee, it's so nice. Mm, yum. You have a, wait, you have a notebook with every food, beverage, and place I've seen in your lives since I follow this channel. You've helped me build a decent tie to-do list for the future, and I'm really grateful for it. <gasps> That's so cool, Alex. I love that. I talk French now. What? <laughs> no, that's okay. That's fine. Hungarian. I understand sometimes people can get mixed up. It's it's one of those like countries in Central Europe that are not... Eh, it's quite often looked over. <laughs> mm. Okay, this... Honestly, I could have two of these. I could have five of these. Plug in my iPhone already. <sighs> so, 
So during my day off yesterday, guys, I had the worst day off yesterday. Like it was like good and bad. Like it was a good, it was a day off, so it was like good. But I was so stressed that it turned. There was like a chunk of my day that was so horrible. It was the most like I was so scatterbrained. Like I was so horribly stressed yesterday. That there was a moment in my afternoon, at the beginning of the afternoon, where I was so stressed that I was like, I was losing my mind. I was seriously losing my mind. And it just made me all like scatterbrained and like forgetful and just, you know, like just, just didn't feel productive because I was like pushing all this energy around, but it was anxious energy. So nothing was getting done properly. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I was like trying to get shit done, nothing was working, little, but then, I, you know, looking back now, like things were ticked off the list, but not in the way I was planning it to be done. Um, and then at one point I was so overwhelmed by my stress and losing my mind and everything. I was like, um, you know what, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to go to the gym and just run off of it, run off this like pent up anxiety energy so I go I get dressed get into my gear grab my yoga mat put in my earphones and leave the apartment and then the minute my apartment door locks because it's a um, it's an automatic it's a an automatic like electronic um, lock that you don't use a key for you use an, a key card to open the apartment it's a key card and we don't have a code set up for the touchpad version of the the machine. So the only way to get into your apartment is if you, you know, place the key card on the scanny part, right? So do you know where this is going, chat? <laughs> so I realized that my spare key card that I usually have in my gym bag is not there. So I locked myself out of the freaking apartment. <laughs> so I go down to the apartment's juristic office and I'm like, hi, can you let me back into my apartment? I locked myself out. I don't have my key card. And they were like, oh, do you, did you set up a keypad like code? I was like, nope like oh okay um well the only what about calling your landlord like no i can't call my landlord um there's just there's no keypad like set up okay so we can call the mechanic to let you back in and like unlock the door for you but you'll have to wait half an hour and you'll have to pay 1500 baht so that's about 40 euros so my anxiety costed me 40 bucks yesterday and an hour of my time because by the time the key, like the locksmith mechanic guy came, I brought him to my door. I explained to him like what the inside part of the machine looks like so he knows what he's like feeling off, feeling around. Um, and then suddenly he's like, James Bond Ocean Eleven's like cracking a safe open type like tools to open up my door and it took 30 minutes for the poor guy to do it um, oh god so there I was wasting my time down 40 bucks and more anxious than ever because I have so much to do and I wanted this like that hour was not meant for me to like wait around being locked out of my room it was or my apartment it was for me to go blow off some steam at the gym so I was so pissed and then I was like well that's it no gym time for me so I go out to run some more errands and um, then I'm like you know what if I can't go to the gym right now um, I'm gonna go while I'm out running errands. I might just pop into the place to get like a Thai massage because my back is really sore and I wanted to get in one last little Thai massage just to treat myself before I leave Thailand. Guess what, chat? So, guess what? Tell me, tell me what happened when I decided to go get a Thai massage. <laughs> guess what happened? <laughs> 
Did Tallulah get a massage yesterday afternoon? Yes, it was all booked up. Every single, I went to three different places near my in my neighborhood. All of them were fully booked. The only place what, that was available to have me last night was at eight o'clock at night. And I was like, I'm not going back out at 8 p.m. just for a massage. I'm gonna be in my pajamas watching Netflix at that point. So I was like, okay, no. So I didn't get a fucking massage either. So I was so pissed. I was like, fine, I'm gonna run my errands. And so I do the errands that I need to run, do. And then I'm like, you know what? Screw this. If I'm not gonna get a massage tonight, I'm buying myself a bottle of wine. And so I go to the grocery store, pick up a little bottle of red wine, go to the cashier and she goes, me, 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 me. And I'm like, what? And she shows the time. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, it's not five o'clock yet. So in Thailand, um, stores are not allowed to sell alcohol between, uh, I forget what point, some point in the morning, but basically during working hours. So between like, I don't know, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., you're not, um, the grocery stores, 7-Elevens, all that, are not allowed to sell alcohol. So here I was, 3.59, so I had an hour to wait for five o'clock. So I was like, I'm out, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. I just wanted to like, you know, fuck this. Like, so I storm back home to my apartment, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna take a bath. <laughs> and so I took a bath. <laughs> um, 11 to 14 and, oh, between five and 24. Oh, oh really? Between 11 and 14 also? I didn't realize that. I, I never under, I never knew about, I, I keep forgetting about that veggie because usually around the time I wanna buy alcohol, it's not at 2 p.m., it's like at 4 p.m. to get ready for dinner time. You know what I mean? So it's always have to wait for 5 p.m. Anyways, so like, and nothing was working. So, and on Sunday we went and to the market and you know, I got myself those cool bath bombs. So I, I was like, I threw one in, I was like, Bleh! and so I had a bath. It chilled me out, it was pretty cool. So that worked. And then after the bath, I felt a lot better and then I was super productive for the rest of the night. But oh my God, it was just like, no, I just want to fucking relax. <laughs> so anyways <laughs> um, so that was my day off um, and then I got some bad news so I had some good news and bad news and oh my god just, there was a lot of good, bad news yesterday and it's some good news so now it's like kind of balanced out um, Gaspar lost a phone one of our stream phones bad um, uh, we got some good other good news that I can't talk to you about. Good. Uh, Project M, good. Also stressful. Um, but good news. We got some really good news yesterday concerning Project M, so that's good. Um, bad news. The charity that I want to donate a bunch of my stuff to was unable to uh, come and personally pick up their stuff from my apartment this morning. So tomorrow I'm gonna have to wake up in the morning before a stream and go to them and drop off all of the items that I want to donate to this charity. So I have to do that before stream. That's okay, the only thing that I'm worried about is that it's, it's quite a heavy bag that I have to donate, like a bag or like a bag full of stuff that I want to donate to them. So I'm hoping that I don't struggle carrying it. But that's not a bad news per se, it's just a convenience thing, but that's fine. I called them this morning and they're like, yeah, you can come tomorrow, that's fine. So at least they'll be able to receive my donation still. Um, now I don't have time for two trips, so I'm gonna just like, what I'm gonna do is call a cab, throw everything in the back of a cab, and then ask somebody at the charity to come out and help me unpack the car. <laughs> it's the only way I can do it. <laughs> yeah. anyway there was a lot of stuff happening in the next couple of days is gonna be freaking insane chat wait 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 Gaspar charity oh.
This coffee is so good. Oh my god. Okay, so after this coffee, I would like to continue to get lost in Chinatown and I want to find that like special secret local tart place. If we don't find the tart place, we'll go to the other place because I want like some, I want a snack. I worked out this morning. I've been working out pretty regularly, like every day. I've been really good at working out every single day, but right now my body is like, you need sustenance because I've been working out every day. <laughs> No, that's not the place I want to go to, Veggie. It's in the market. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tilted. Happy eight months. BTW, you, um, I got your DM, and, and actually I have everybody's postcards in my bag. The one errand that I was hoping to get done this morning before starting stream was to send the postcards, um, but that didn't happen because I had to organize the charity thing this morning and um, then Gaspar called me with things and then I realized that I had to um, do SIM card stuff before I was able to stream. Like I had to top up my local SIM cards one last time. So anyway, there was a lot of things happening. So I didn't end up going to the post office this morning. Um, so I've got yours in the pile. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine postcards to send um, to you, all of you guys who did their did their final postcard redeems in Thailand. I'm not gonna be able to. Um, uh oh, what's happening here? I'm not gonna be able to. Well, what's happening with the bit rate? Wait, I'm not gonna be able to. I'm not going to be able to send any more, so don't um, try and send wires. Did my SIM card thing? The minute I started talking about SIM cards, I don't understand. Weird. Hmm. All right. Maybe it's just the area. Right, what's next? Project M, baby. What, what, what? Thank you, Shulu. So good to see you, Shulu. Hi, Unitato. How are you? What's up, girl? What's up? What's up? Hey, 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 oh, hey, oh, hey. Um, <laughs> oops. Don't mind me. The coffee's clearly getting to my head. <laughs> Exact reason why every time I'm emotional or not mentally stable, I take a good amount of time to stabilize myself or avoid accrue a lot of mistakes, which can make things more time consuming and get a lot worse. It'll be worth it in the long run. Don't try to get things done when you're not thinking straight. I know, Daniel, and it was just one of those moments where I didn't see it coming. You know, usually I'm pretty good at like identifying my anxiety and just like taking a minute to deal with it before I like mess shit up like I did yesterday, but. I was already spiraling and you know like when you don't catch it in time you're in the middle of you're in the middle of the storm and you don't necessarily realize and you're just kind of like in in like fix mode do you know what I'm saying yeah um, does project M involve Australia I wish No, I'm not caffeine sensitive. Well, I am in, no, I'm, I am in the sense that I need at least five liters a day to function. <laughs> Flee, yeah, fight, 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 fight. fight. <laughs> Should I eat the cocktail cherry that they put? Oh, this coffee was so good. Mm, I'm so glad I tried that. Mm. Mmm. Mmm. Hi, Seti. You're still in Bangkok. Are you gonna go get your PCR test today, or like, what's going on? How you doing? Coffee was so good. I want a second one. 
but I shall resist. It's time to move along. It's time to move along. Let's go to our next stop. <sighs> Should I bring back uh, my glass and stuff? At least put it inside somewhere? Oh, great, Seti. I hope it wasn't too annoying. I'm gonna have to slowly think about um, booking my PCR test too. I heard it's risky to travel as a single woman. How do you feel about this and what type of self-protection have you got for this? First of all, I'm not single. Second of all, we're not living in the 1920s. So I don't know what like assumption you have about women, but you know, we're pretty self-sufficient more or less. Um, but having said that, um, I understand where you, what, what you might be asking. There might be some places or some risks but honestly like firstly having that state of mind is the wrong state of mind like ev you know everyone and anyone can be at risk of getting into trouble doesn't matter about their sex I understand why, why you're asking that question because unfortunately we live in a world that perhaps women might be targeted a bit more um, for certain things um, but you know at the end of the day, I do not believe in living my life in this, having that narrative uh, like control my actions, especially as a traveler. You know, the world is a nasty place. It doesn't matter where you are, you know. As being a woman in your home country and being a woman in a foreign country, you're, it's like, you, you know, just like do, be smart, don't go to like places where you might not feel comfortable. Everyone has their limits. Everyone's experience is different, and um, just be careful and know and be and just be educated. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's really unfortunate to still have to like I'm a woman. I have to be. I'm scared. You know, like no. There is never a moment in my life as a traveler where I woke up one morning and I was like, oh my God, I'm a girl, I can't do this. No, I wake up every morning thinking, fuck yeah, I'm a friggin' strong ass woman, I'm independent, and I'm gonna take on this world like no, like every other person. I believe in equality, you know? Um, unfortunately, that doesn't mean everybody believes that, and then there are idiots and assholes out there in the world who might target women more than men, in, and women are victimized more in certain, you know, crimes and whatever. But um, again, I don't think that should limit you from traveling the world or doing anything that you want, you know? Um, there are some countries that perhaps as a woman you might need to like consider certain things. Um, but just educate yourself, be respectful of the culture, and um, just be smart about what you do when you travel. But honestly, that advice should go for everyone, not just women and their safety. That should just be a general rule that you take as a person who travels the world. Be smart, educate yourself, learn about the culture you're visiting, learn about, you know, if you are safety conscious, you know, just figure out where where you should be, where what part of the neighbor, neighborhoods you want to like visit, and what parts you want to ignore. However, um, you know, also just follow your instinct. Like, uh, don't don't go to a weird like back alley in the middle of the night by yourself where there's a bunch of gangsters hanging out. Like, I don't, you know, I'm trying to like paint a picture. And you know, at the end of the day. The world, the world is, there are shitty people in the world, but like, out of my years of traveling, I've never, I've only encountered one or two bad experiences out of the thousands of experiences that I've made. You know what I mean? Um, so it just comes with being vigilant, being safe, you know, I got unlucky once or twice, as you guys know, but 
like of course I don't carry pepper spray I think it's an again if you're if you're carrying a weapon if you're carrying pepper spray firstly that's the narrative that you're, you're walking around with that I do not support the narrative of I have to have something to defend myself because that means you expect to be attacked and that's such a negative way to view the world you're not you're not that special <laughs> The, one, the day I realized I was not that special. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, it's, it's, if you're safe and if you just do your thing, just, there's no need to, to weaponize yourself. Also, um, I would highly suggest against carrying weapons, especially when you're traveling internationally. Like, that's illegal. <laughs> Firstly, how are you going to bring that on the plane? Secondly, carrying pepper spray in Thailand is against the law. Like, carrying a gun is against the law. Like, you probably shouldn't, you know what I mean? Like, um, if again, if you want to do self descent like, that's your prerogative. But I really, the one message I want to bring here to make clear is don't assume that because I'm a woman or don't assume because these girls that are traveling or any woman is automatically in danger because they're out on the streets in the world. No, we're, we're smart. We know how to take care of ourselves. And yes, unfortunately, there are there is a higher percentage of women who are victims of attacks. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's an automatic like it's not an equation you know like I can speak from a place where I've been traveling for many years I've been attacked you guys know that unfortunately it was very very publicly broadcasted um, have I changed my view no because that was one shitty guy bad luck and again that was one instance out of years and years and years of travel. I still don't believe that I need to carry my, a weapon. I still don't, don't believe that it's any more unsafe to travel as a single female than it is to case, travel as a single anyone. Um, the thing is, it's just about being aware of yourself and just like being smart about where you are, you know? Um, Obviously, statistically speaking, there will always be a tiny, tiny, tiny chance of something going wrong, but that's only if you're counting, right? I don't know. I hope I'm like, I hope I'm being true, but like, I thank you for that question. Um, I forget who it was in the chat. I'm not, I'm not calling you out. I'm just like, I think it's a very important topic to discuss. Um, I've traveled solo, I've been traveling solo, um, of course. I am engaged and I have a, I have a partner, um, but that, yeah, I am alone sometimes. But um, I just, I really, 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 really don't want that to be the narrative because I think it's unfair and it's kind of, I think what it is is that it's like, what's the word? It's it's um taking away out as a female traveler I th and as like rep as a representative of this group of people of female travelers i think if we assume that these people are in danger that's really kind of um devaluing our our worth like you know what i mean <laughs> like trust that like trust us women who travel solo that we know what we're doing I guess um, and uh, you know uh, every per, every traveler whether you're a woman or a man or however you identify if you're a traveler I hope that you are taking care of yourself that you you know, are educating yourself in safety, um, that you're in control of your travels, right? Um, so I think it's not, has nothing, it's not like the main topic of 
traveling solo as a female, am I in danger? I think it's just, are you out in the world? How are you taking care of yourself? You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that, yeah, um, it's a lot, it's a lot to wrap my head around that topic. But it's funny because over the five, almost six years that I've been streaming on Twitch, this question has been brought up every time I'm not streaming with Gaspar. Um, and it's like, I feel like I'm a great representation of a female traveler who shows that it's not a scary thing to do. If you're interested in traveling and if you're, if you identify as a single girl, single woman, single female, if that's your identity, single woman, um, why would that part of your identity stop you from doing what you want to do? Like, that's crazy to me. You're, you're an, you are going to be a woman in your home country with the same risks being a woman in that country than in other countries. I understand that there are many countries out there that, like I said, you should be a little bit more weary of being a single female, but then just travel with a group of people or just learn the, the cost, learn learn your learn your way around do you know what I'm saying fear is yeah it's about that's I think the main thing red pill well said it's don't let fear um, dictate your behavior whether it's traveling or anything right um, well, dark matter, I, it's not that I'm strictly doing daytime because of my safety, it's just that I like to, you know, I, it's just my schedule and I do go out late at night. We do do nighttime streaming and, um, the, you know, the other night I was out in Bangkok in the middle of the night until 1 a.m. and I was totally home to go home, to go home by myself. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Traveling with a knife will put you in danger because then they'll like. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Why are you concerned for my safety? Thank you very much, but I know what I'm doing. Um. I don't know. I hope I hope I've been making myself clear. Um. We could honestly have a hour long debate about this, um, you know. I mean, I'm obviously not living in a fantasy world where I, I don't like that. I am aware as a woman, I'm presented in the world in a different way. Um, but I refuse to really let that dictate a lot of my everyday life. I have to admit, there are moments where I'm like, oh, actually, I don't want to do that. And it, is and, and it is coming from a place of, I am a woman, I don't feel comfortable doing that. But I'm pretty sure if I, I'm pretty sure everybody, whether you identify as a woman or a man or, or non-gender or, you know, um, there, you will, we will all have experienced a moment where we're like, you know what, I'm not comfortable in this situation. And whether that's dictated by your identity as a, or gender or whatever it is, you know, we all have our, our boundaries, you know? Speaking for myself, walking around with a knife would be far more dangerous. I hurt myself out of nowhere without even knowing. Imagine I had a knife. <laughs> yeah, you'd like fall on it and stab yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, same. But no, I'm just like, I'm a pacifist. There's absolutely no reason for me to walk around with pepper spray or a switchblade or like, to me, that's like, that's, that's not in my culture either. Like, um, I am privileged, I guess, in the sense that I feel like I don't need to do that. Um, you know, so I am, I am understanding my privilege as well. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, it's a, it's a huge topic because obviously everybody's experience is individual, and everybody's opinion about being out in the world is based on their personal experience. So me, so coming from a personal perspective, I've been traveling for several years. I've never felt in danger. I know I am smart about what I do. I know what I'm doing. Um, I will never, you know, li lightly insert myself into a situation where I feel uncomfortable. I know my limits. I know my boundaries. I also understand that perhaps my limits are not the same as someone else's limits, and I respect that. Um, yeah. And just because I believe in not carrying weapons doesn't mean that you don't have to, that you believe it, like you can do what you want, like, but me personally, I will never do, like, do that. Mm, that's your opinion, Red Pill, but like I said, I really don't feel the need to carry that. I, really would feel very uncomfortable with having something like that in my possession. Also, it's really not necessary <laughs> in my case. So the thing is, again, going back to being a traveler, a female traveler, um, I, again, it's about knowing your limits and understanding the world and to some degree. There, are, I admit there are places that I would not travel to without Gaspar. I would not travel by myself. But, you know, again, my personal opinion. I know several women, solo female travelers, who've traveled, traveled to certain destinations that I personally would not feel comfortable going by myself. That's my personal opinion, my personal feelings, yeah. Mm hmm I think, yeah, I think generally speaking, the world is like, the world's okay. Like, people are just living their life and just stressing about their own personal selves. Um, so if you just like do your thing and like just be respectful of your surroundings, whether you're traveling or at home, um, being aware of your surroundings, you, you, you're, you can be pretty safe. Like, think of it like this. Every, like, how many times have you gone out of your door and encountered a bad experience versus good experiences? I think that's a positive take. There are, every, every day when I leave my house, I actually don't expect something bad to happen. And that's actually a very amazing like, realization. You know, in my, where I am in my life, with my, what I do, more like every day I leave the apartment or wherever I am and I'm not expecting danger. Um, yeah. Yeah. Most people are good. It only takes one per bad person at the wrong time. Exactly. Um, again, I don't like to talk to, nor do I want to talk about my incident, but I also am aware that many of you guys were there with to see it, and I'm not going to pretend it didn't happen. Very great example of that. My all my years of traveling, that one a hole, one that put wrong, like bad place, bad time, bad luck, doesn't necessarily mean the entire world is dangerous for me, and it doesn't mean that the country is bad. There are assholes all over the world. Yeah, if you're if you're living in a in a world, if your world is every morning you wake up and your stress is survival, like yeah, so I'm privileged. I am privileged to wake up every morning feeling safe and leaving my apartment door, <laughs> leaving my building 
or a hotel or whatever it is that I'm staying, feeling safe. And I think that's kind of where we need to sort of remember, remind ourselves. most dangerous place that I've traveled to? Is that the question? Um, I mean, I don't travel to dangerous places. Like, you know, it's part of the reason I, I'm like, you know, being a smart traveler also means don't taking risks that are not worth it, you know? Uh, so I'm not going to be traveling in a war zone. I'm not going to be tra traveling to, you know, things like that. What was in Japan? Mm. Um, we tried streaming in India. It didn't work. The network connection was too congested. Yeah. Really too bad because I hope to, to travel there one day and then try it again. But um, we'll let someone else test the waters first this time. <laughs> But yes, actually, you're right. Um, after TwitchCon Berlin, so this was uh, 2019 in April, around this time, uh, we went to Mumbai and we tried uh, streaming from it, from Mumbai, thinking, all right, we're going to start our India trip here and move north, like do a North India trip, like from Mumbai, start traveling north. Um, we spent a week in Mumbai struggling with the stream because it was so congested during the day. Like the data, the network, um, the network uh, was good on paper, but because there's billions of people using it during the day, it's like, whoa, you know, too much, too many people using it at once. So it was really, 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 really unstable. No, not from India. Um, hi, Martin. I mean, again, very generalized comment which I'm always a f like I'm very weary when that when we have when we make generalized comments about anything and especially when it comes to travel like making a generalized statement obviously that's a human a human thing that's the way our brain works and learns um, but I also want to be it I want to be educated and respectful in the fact that you know if you say a country is unsafe for women is. Okay, sure, but you know, you know, yeah. Um, again, every everybody's opinion is different, and everybody's um, experience is different. Again, I know people. I know single women who have traveled in India, and they're fine. So uh, it depends on. It, yeah, it's it's. It's a bit more complicated than that. It's more complicated to be like, country X is dangerous. Country X is dangerous for solo travelers. Country X is dangerous for female travelers. Country X is dangerous for young backpackers or whatever the statement is, right? Yeah. You see, what kind of clip, what, what, are, you, what are you doing with the clips? I don't understand what you're doing with these clips. Time difference between Thailand and US. Um, well, I don't know, it's 3.30 here. I know I'm excited about I'm excited about the opportunity in the future about India for sure. Um, I think that would be an amazing trip, and I really want to do it. But again, because we're full-time streamers, we really need to we really need to take that into consideration. That's why like there's so many countries out there that Gaspar and I would love to visit with you guys and what that we personally would love to travel to. For example, my one of my top like I would love to I would love to go to Mongolia, for example. But there's absolutely no way we can stream in Mongolia. It's just it doesn't it's just it's not happening, right? Um, and 
considering that we're travelers but we also are full-time travel streamers that's how we make a living we, we cannot like we, we have to make the sacrifice of okay what country can we travel to that is streamable I have to add that into the formula what was my most surprised experience on the stream a good vibe there are so many um oh gosh <laughs> nepal i love nepal oh what it's world asthma day today chat i just got a message happy world asthma day <laughs> Yeah, it's being a traveler is one thing. Being a traveler who streams their life on Twitch, that kind of adds an extra factor into the way you travel and you have to put that into cons it's a big it's a big consideration to make, you know. This is how I make a living, so I need to make sure that I can do what I do if I want to continue traveling. They 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 go hand in hand now. So that's why, you know, we, anyways, having said that, like, guys, we've traveled to over 25 countries on this stream and counting, you know, like, I, we definitely have way more countries to visit and, you know, network connection and technology is improving every single day. That's, that, you know, that obviously has its positive and negatives too. Um, Happy, happy asthma day, fellow bad bleeding folks. Do you have asthma? Well, happy asthma day. <laughs> what does that mean? Thank you, Wolf. Um, so, you know, like, the, the, we still have a big, like, array of countries to explore with um, the stream. And then the rest is just patience, you know? India, great example. We tried it, it didn't work. Uh, we'll see down the line like again if, if looking guys like those of you who've been watching IRL streams regularly this channel other channels um, and maybe you've been a regular IRL viewer for a few years now I'm sure even as a viewer you've noticed the kind of improvements in the IRL streaming game technology everything like when we started streaming at the beginning of 2017 we streamed and the way we streamed uh, our travels back at the beginning of 2017 versus now it's almost six years later there are so many so many improvements and opportunities that we've been able to do as the technology started to continue to improve like the live view solo device for example only came out a few years ago like a few years after we started streaming um you know gaspar and i we have that friggin insane setup that we were that we got from live view um for streaming on our sailboat you know um it, and that's only a recent addition. Like this is now our little baby, like child's play setup here compared to the other setups that we have for streaming. You guys know, those of you who've been with us for the last few years, you know? So now it's like, okay, next year, what is LiveView gonna come out with? Next year, what does the network connection gonna look like? Next year, what are the satellite options gonna look like? Um, it's crazy. Also sad to think that so many remote places might end up being streamable, which is cool. It also means it's going to be less and less remote places to escape technology. There's always a plus and a minus with that as well, right? <laughs> Underwater streaming was 